Welcome back to Joel Explores Tech. I've been pretty busy recently, so I haven't been putting out a lot of videos. Uh, I've been working on some different projects. Uh, most notably, I've been restoring a Commodore pet. Uh, you can see behind me here uh, the case and the motherboard I've been working on. Um, some of the other different projects I've been re uh, doing some restorations for some upcoming videos. But I wanted to uh, run through a recent pickup. I found a boxed copy of Vista Pro a 3D landscape application uh, that I played a lot with in the DOS days on my 486 machine. Uh, this box copy is for the Windows version, so Windows 3.1. It's the CD version, and I think it has a number of different things on the disk. Uh, it's still sealed in the box, uh, so we'll open it up, see what's inside. Vista Pro was released on uh, the Amiga, uh, Macintosh, and PCs as well, uh, and allowed you to render both stills of uh, 3D landscapes as well as animations. Um, but of course, back in the day on our 46 machines, it would take overnight uh, to render any kind of uh, even short animation. Let's get the 46 machine set up, install Vista Pro and start exploring. So this is the copy of Vista Pro that I recently picked up. Um, it's still in the cellophane outer packaging. It's torn a little bit on the front here. Uh, this is the Windows version. Uh, in 1994, so Vista Pro by uh, Virtual Reality Laboratories Incorporated. Uh, looks like our system requirements are 386 or greater, 4 megabytes of RAM, SVGA, and 7 megabytes of hard drive space. Without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Okay, so not a whole lot in the box. We've got the Vista Pro 3.0 for Windows. Includes electronic manual. We have a quick start guide and some supplemental documentation for the Mars data. I do remember that was a big selling point uh, was that they had the uh, Mars surface topology included with the program and then a mail-in card to register the software. Taking a look at the contents of the Vista Pro disk itself, we have a 3D viewer. This lets you play uh, left and right eye views on uh, stereoscopic glasses, I believe. And the FLI format was a um, video format from Autodesk Animator back in the day, uh, another program I used a lot growing up. Uh, here we have Autodesk Animator for Windows. I believe this is just the player, so you can install that. We have some demo files, I believe. And FLC files are also related to Autodesk Animator. Like we have some different demos. Then we have Mars X. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Interesting. So I've noticed there's something off with the video player in DOS, or the uh, the video driver uh, with with the uh, DOS versions of the Vista Pro application. Um, but it looks like we are loading the map of Mars. You can zoom in. Sphere. Kind of cool. 3D back in the day. So I think basically just a uh, 
application for exploring the Mars data that he included with Vista Pro. And I assume this is similar. Yeah, same thing here. Uh, DOS utilities. There's a number of different converters for things like um, turning a FLC into a PCX file. Let's see what Fractal is. Okay, so this is rendering a fractal as a 2D image that you could then use to uh, display as a 3D landscape. Uh, music, a whole bunch of MIDI files. So I think these are just uh, classical music and such that you can use for uh, background music in your animations. PCX, probably some demo images. Yeah, I think so. And then we have Vid for Win, which is a video player for Windows, Vista Player itself, and then the 32-bit uh, uh, Windows executable extension that it has to install as part of the Vista Pro. I ran the install from the CD, and after that it did require also installing the Win32 runtime environment, as the application is written as a 32-bit app. So upon loading Vista Pro, you get the essentially the same interface that you would have seen in the DOS version. The only difference I'm seeing are the top menus are the uh, Windows variant. We can uh, see about Vista Pro. So it was created by John Hinckley in the early 90s. This Windows version is the 3.13 version. Uh, you can load various different formats, things that set up what the cloud pattern is, palette to use, you can even load uh, base images to use for the terrain. Uh, scripts are the paths that the uh, animations will follow. So the camera will uh, follow the, the script and render out an image at each location. Image size, you can set your size of, of what your renders are. And then your quality. Uh, so if we hit render just out of the gate, we'll get a render, I believe it's at low quality. Let's just set it to low, do that first render. And there we go. We've just got a flat landscape with a like a pyramid in the middle right now. Looking at some of the options on the right hand side panel, uh, we've got the target where we can set the target of the camera. You can see the two view lines showing uh, from the camera origin, uh, what you would be seeing. And you have to remember a lot of this was fairly new back then. There weren't a lot of uh, 3D applications that an end, end level uh, consumer would be using. Um, so for me and my friends, this was a, a very cool program to play around with, just doing different experiments and, and getting to know uh, some of the ins and outs of, of doing 3D work. Uh, then we can go to the camera itself, place the, the camera, uh, pointing at that uh, fixed target now. Um, you can set any of the, the heights or uh, positions manually. You can also set the, the bank, so like the roll, uh, how, how far up or down the camera is tilting. Um, you can set sea level, so you can set a, a base level where anything below that will be water. So it adds like a, a horizontal water plane and will even render uh, waves. You can set the tree line, so what, what level on your uh, elevation you want trees to appear below and snow line um, haze you can turn on and off trees valleys cliffs all these uh, options um, you can add a lake uh, instead of sea level doing the whole map lakes will just add uh, within one contiguous area you can add a river by clicking any point on the elevation it will calculate the uh, downward tra trajectory to lower elevations. You can turn on stars for like a night view, but there's an, a ton of options in the program. Uh, I'm not gonna go through everything. So um, other things down here, the main is, is sort of the um, detail level. So the number of polygons, the texture level, um, turning on and off different shaders or blending options. Uh, you can do different lenses. You can render fractals, I believe, uh, for different maps, yep. So uh, this is giving us a, a terrain to work with. If we do a quick render of this. 
there we have our, our terrain. Uh, obviously a, a very uh, low poly version, uh, but we can bump it up to maybe medium and do another render, get a better idea of what it's going to look like. So there we go. There's that uh, medium. Um, and then other options, uh, light. So you can set sort of the, uh, the direction of the sun. Uh, I think it's single light source, um, but you can set how strong the shadows and um, other options uh, related to light as well. So those are the main options as far as sort of setting up your camera and uh, rendering options. So really the, the main other function would be the uh, scripting. We'll render out a animation and see what that looks like. So let's load another, actually first let's look at the scripts that we have. So how about the Matterhorn? And then let's load the corresponding landscape. And then I believe if we do preview, it will show us. Okay, so we have to reselect the script we want to preview. And let's do a 3D. Okay, so 195 frames. That looks pretty cool. So I think I'm going to go ahead and render this on the 486. Let's set our image size to 320 by 200 because uh, it is rendering out PCX files which are not uh, compressed. So you uh, eat up disk space pretty quickly. Okay, so we select our script and then it's asking us where we want to save so we'll call this Matterhorn I want to confirm the settings that it's on currently as well because this can take quite a while. Uh, I'll time lapse it for the video, but I don't want it to take you know three days to render here. So so we've got our MH two AVI file. If we open that up. We'll see it playing back at 24 frames per second. So it's only a few seconds long with the 195 frames we have. It's still a little bit jerky. Um, I think optimally you'd want to render out more frames, but this will give you an idea of the results. And this was pretty impressive for back in the day, uh, especially on a 486 machine, um, seeing you know full animation uh, video playing. There were games that started coming out in the Pentium era, like Magic Carpet and uh, Comanche, uh, the helicopter game, uh, that had terrain kind of similar to this, but not, not quite to this level. Um, so this was pretty cool back in the day. I hope you enjoyed the quick look at Vista Pro for Windows 3.1. Let me know in the comments if uh, you used Vista Pro back in the day and what you used it for. I think that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.